We studied electromagnetic plane waves, and now the question is, does the direction of the E field really make a difference? Let's think about our plane wave solution to the wave equation, the electromagnetic wave equation. We have an E field here, and it goes sinusoidally in the direction of the K vector, and we have a B field perpendicular to it that also changes sinusoidally um, in phase with the E field. So the question is, does it make a difference if E is up and B is sideways and K is that way, and if this thing's just propagating in empty space, well, let's see, E cross B has to be K, I could also draw it like this, E this way, K that way, and then E cross B still has to be K, and B could be down, and are those two physically any different? Because really, if you think about it, all I have to do is look at it this way, and if I want to see that one, I just sort of turn my head that way. There's no difference, right? Well, there is a difference if you think about what we're doing in our next section, <clears throat> and that is to let the light interact with a surface. So in addition to thinking about what happens to light when it's inside of a dielectric, you could ask, how does it get there? What happens to light when it goes from vacuum or air into a heavy medium or a dense medium like a dielectric? So here is sort of a drawing of a surface. And what we see is, suddenly, it does matter which way the E-field points. Because here, just in empty space, doesn't matter which way the E-field goes, it's just space. But now we can imagine two ways that the light could approach the surface. So here I'm trying to show you sort of a 3D projected kind of view. So here is a light wave, and, uh, or an oscillating E-field, uh, electromagnetic plane wave, going towards the surface like this. The Sinusoidal uh, plot represents the E field. So we have a big E field pointing to the right here, a big E field pointing to the left. So that's E. Right? This kind of polarization is called transverse electric. Okay, so <clears throat> you have to think about the what's called the plane of incidence. If we look back over here, and if we have um, this surface and we have a K vector coming in, K incident like these K vectors, but it's angling down and in, and the E field is doing that. If you draw the incident K vector and then just the surface normal, make it a unit vector, those two together define the plane of incidence. So in this drawing, <coughs> the plane of incidence is perpendicular to the board, because K is going into the board, and the plane of incidence is like this. The electric field points perpendicular to the plane of incidence. It's transverse to the plane of incidence. That's why this polarization with the E field doing this is called transverse electric. You may also see it referred to as S-polarized, and S stands for senkrecht, which is German for perpendicular. Right? So perpendicular E-field. The other kind of polarization, you might kind of draw like this. So here the E-field is going up and down, and I've got a little bit of a perspective here to show you that it's going into the plane. And this time you can see the E-field points up and down, but it remains in the plane, or in the plane of incidence. Okay? So in that case, we don't, you would think we might call it parallel electric, but no, we call it transverse magnetic. Because remember, if the E field is doing this, the B field is always perpendicular to it. So in this case, the magnetic field is transverse to the plane of incidence. So that's TM. So, and then there's also, if this is S polarized, it's called P polarized. And that P stands for the German word for parallel, which is parallel. Okay. So half the time they're called TE, TM, half the time it's S and P. Just depends on the book you're reading and the, and the, the, the focus of the book. Uh, here we're going to call mostly TE and, and TM. But you can see that when you're off on your own in the empty space, nothing around, the polarization, you kind of get the impression it doesn't matter here. It actually does. We'll talk about why later. But when you approach a surface, definitely there's a distinction between the two polarizations. And it's important because they will interact with the surface differently. What we're going to do now is um, do some optics with field theory. We've got our electromagnetic wave equation, and the solution we're using is the traveling wave, the plane wave traveling wave. And now to figure out what happens to light at the interface, we're going to apply boundary conditions. We're not going to quite do it exactly how we did it with the string, but still, we're applying boundary conditions. And what these fields do to the boundary depends very much on which way uh, the field is pointing. So let's look it, how we can now treat this more mathematically. Um, this. And let's draw 
the two cases, TE and TM, in a way where we can label everything. Okay? So here is one interface. And what I'm going to be drawing is uh, an interface. Let's see. There we go. So first we're going to draw the incident electromagnetic plane wave. And we're not going to draw every vector. We're going to draw it like this. Where here, this is the incident vector. So Ki, that's the wave vector of the incident light. And just to let you know which way the E field is going to point, I'm going to draw some uh, vectors on here. Oops, that one's a little too big. Like that. Like that. And I'm going to put an X and then a dot and an X and a dot. Because that is meaning that's the E field making a sinusoidal pattern. All right. So if the E field is making a pattern like this, now the way I've drawn it, the uh, plane of incidence is the plane of the board. Because we have K. And here's the normal, drawn as a dotted line rather than a vector. But the plane of incidence is the plane of the board. The electric field, I'm drawing the electric field here, sticks into the plane of incidence. It's transverse to the plane of incidence. So this is TE. So we're drawing TE. And other things we want to label here, this is the KI, the incident vector, incident wave vector. We want to label this as theta i. That's the angle of incidence. So. Two things might happen, or will happen, uh, might happen. Uh, to the light is it might reflect and go off this way. That would be kr, the reflected wave vector. It would have its own angle, theta r, maybe, like that. And we could draw field uh, vectors on it, but let's not, just to keep it not so messy. And then some of the light might go into the medium, like this. And that will have its own wa wave vector, uh, kt. And the angle we define is also with respect to the uh, normal, and that would be at the angle theta t. Okay. So that captures uh, everything we need. And then we can, um, let's go ahead and write out then uh, uh, expressions for these things. So the incident plane wave. So E incident as a field, this incident plane wave. We would write it as E naught I vector. That's the vector amplitude. E to the J, and then Ki dot R, the incident um, wave vector, minus omega I T, that's its uh, angular frequency. It's at some frequency. And then plus, it might have a phase, phi I. And I think, yeah, that's everything. I'm trying to get all the notation correct. Okay, that's the incident plane wave. Then there is a reflected plane wave, possibly, and it will have an amp a vector amplitude e naught r, e to the j, and it'll have a different wave vector, k r dot r. It might have a different frequency, minus omega r t. It might have some different phase lag than the incident. And then, of course, there's the transmitted plane wave, E naught T vector amplitude, E to the J, K transmitted wave vector dot R minus, maybe it's at its own frequency, omega T times time, and maybe it has a phase, a phase lag. Okay, there they are. And we didn't really distinguish TE from TM here, right? So this is a drawing for TE. I can do the drawing for TM. Looks something like this. Here's the normal. So the k vector still comes in like that. It's still ki, and it's still going to maybe reflect like that, kr, and it's still going to transmit like that, um, kt. And the angles are the same, theta i, theta r, uh, theta t. The only difference is, if I were to actually draw the electric fields on here, they would look different. So here, this is how you might draw the electric field um, on this one. And it's doing that as it comes in, the E field. So the E field, you can see, is in the plane of incidence. The plane of incidence is the plane of the board. Therefore, this magnetic field must be transverse to the plane of incidence. So this is Tm.
But this mathematical part we've written doesn't really distinguish yet which is which. We'll really apply that when we think about boundary conditions. So one thing to keep up with is what are we doing here? Okay, so we're trying to figure out when the light comes in, what happens. So in a sense, you can think you're given the input plane wave. You're given E naught I, right? And you're given this angle that it's coming in, theta incidence. And you're given omega I and Ki. You know there's just a plane wave coming in. You know those are related by the speed of light. So in addition to, yeah, well, you have the whole vector, K, the, the wave vector Ki. And you're even given the phase coming in. In fact, you can usually just set it equal to zero. Your incident, call it phase equals zero. And then the question is, what happens to all these? They're K vectors, they're omegas, they're phi's, they're e's, etc. Okay, so that's what we're going to be calculating. 